service committee meeting is called to order. Sam, would you give us a invocation, please, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for bringing each and every one here today, Lord. We ask that you guide and direct this meeting in, uh, in your will, Lord, and let us do the best we can for our communities and for our tribe, Lord. And we thank you again. And please uh, ask for a hand of uh, protection on each one as they go about their day the rest of the evening, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, Shelly, roll call, please. Yes, sir. Daryl Legg. Here. Melvina Shot Pouch. Bonnie. Keith Austin. Here. Danny Callison. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Sean Crittenden. Here. Joe Deere. Here. Mike Dobbins. Here. Rex Jordan. Here. Johnny Kidwell. Here. Wes Snowfire. Here. Dora Petskowski. Here. Joshua Sam. Here. <coughs> Mike Shambaugh. E.O. Smith. Here. Condessa Teehee. Victoria Vasquez, we have a quorum. All right, thank you, Shelley. Can I get approval for the minutes, please? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, reports. Human Services, Jennifer Kirby. Good afternoon, Council. How are you doing, Jennifer? Um, you have our report for human services. Um, I'll just ask if there's any questions um, on the report. Any questions for Jennifer? Julia. Hi, Hi Jennifer. Hi. <laughs> Thank you very much for your follow-up on a couple of things that have come up recently with uh, sure. questions about the uh, clothing vouchers, right? Sure. But. Um, my, my question today is that um, I have recently received uh, a couple of calls um, from people who are in other locations outside of the jurisdiction, one in Oklahoma and one in California, of people who um, are essentially homeless and who are thinking of trying to come here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with the understanding that there is assistance that could be available for them here that is not available as at large, mm -hmm. right? But um, I just wanted to verify that for our programs, one still has to establish uh, an address within jurisdiction. Is that not right? I mean, it, for, for someone who doesn't have um, an address at all. I mean, somebody was asking me, for instance, if we offer um, assistance to stay in a motel while they get themselves established. Mm -hmm. You know, they're right. living in a car with five kids right now. And, but to my knowledge, we don't really have anything along those lines to offer. Is that correct? Or that That's correct. Right now, it, it would be more advisable to them to, unless they're willing to stay maybe in, in a shelter until they locate housing, but all of the people that we have dealt with in that similar situation did, were working kind of on the phone or kind of working with us a little bit to give them um, names and phone numbers and addresses of properties that might be in the area that they might could rent. And of course, you know, income's a big, a big thing. If they don't have an established income and then they're coming here, that's just another factor that would be on top of not having a place to live that would also have to be established. So um, it would be more advisable to contact us and have us kind of walk through these are the things that you need to look at. Um, because they, they have come here kind of from, from some of those areas that you're talking about. And, and it was just, it was really difficult to find them a place um, to stay, especially with their children. Um, and so, yeah, it would be more advisable to do it that way. So, unfortunately, if they're if they're unhoused in some other location, they're they're going to be unhoused here yeah. too, at least for a time. Yeah, yeah, for for a time. Um, you know, normally, if they have something in the works and we can verify that, we try to do everything we can to help help link find link or find resources to bridge that gap from when they're homeless to moving in somewhere. But yes, any any of our programs that um, help with 
uh, move-in costs, deposits, things like that, would have to have an address within in reservation. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like if they go to housing authority, then it's like you get a voucher for emergency rental assistance if it's a, an emergency. Mm -hmm. But they come to y'all for like the deposit on the sewer lock water uh, mm -hmm. security deposit. Yeah. So y'all work y'all two departments work together on mm -hmm. trying to get somebody fit. Yeah. But it's all for nothing if they don't have a job and can't make next month's rent. Right, right. Then then they're they're kind of in a um, in a spot, a very difficult spot, because you know if you if you do start a job, it usually takes six six to eight weeks to get a, a full paycheck coming in, um, and sometimes we can do first month's rent. It really just depends on how much the deposits and everything are. But yeah, we we work with closely with the housing authority to to try to um, get as much assistance as they can, but at least get them on their feet. But yeah, if they're their um, employment is not secure than that. That really um, leaves them to maybe have to come back again gotcha. in a month or so. Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions for Jim? Go ahead, Eo. Oh, on foster care, mm -hmm. is the number of kids growing so much faster than people applying for to be foster parents? Has that dropped way down? Um. I would have to look at that to kind of look at a time frame, but I would say that it, it's still a need and oh, there's yeah. and there's still, um, you know, you look at different age groups uh, coming in, probably all different ages. Um, I, I would say that the, there's not been, you know, a real big influx of, of new foster parents. Um, you know, sometimes some people take a break too. And then, so then you need to find another family to come in and, and um, take care of those children. So um, I wouldn't say that it's, it's gone down significantly. Well, I, don't, I was trying to look at some old numbers and I probably mm -hmm. got it confused or something. It looked like it's really getting flipped another way. I mean, it's getting worse, isn't it? Well, I, I I would definitely have to look at a time frame. Maybe maybe I can look a little bit closer at this year's and kind of see if it if it is increasing. I I would think that um, I would think that yes, it probably is because of things um, more kids coming into state mm -hmm. custody and then you know maybe possibly in this area in the in the tribal area too. Mm -hmm. so. And a lot of people are confused about family how they can do that. That's Mm -hmm. Y'all get a lot of questions on that. Isn't that a rough subject there? You mean like if um, if it's a family member wanting to take foster over over a, right. another mm -hmm. family, um, like maybe even a distant family relative or something like that? Oh, yeah. I, w I would think that um, I believe at most of our community meetings we have someone there from ICW that, that sets up and, and discusses the foster the foster families um, and the need for for more foster homes. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure that they do um, set up at every one of the community meetings that they can go to. So that might be a good resource next time. But I, I'll I'll look at the numbers over like this this year that we just ended and kind of see where the increase is going. Um, well, I know y'all do a lot of advertising, and I was just kind of looking mm -hmm. at some of the old numbers. It looked like it was still tilting. Yeah. The bad way. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of um, after effects, too, of COVID. This is just my guess. Um, a lot of effects of COVID, a lot of economic factors that maybe um, families, you know, can't, can't care for their children like they used to. Mm -hmm. um, those sorts of things are probably hitting well after the pandemic has kind of slowed down a little bit. So, yeah. I appreciate it. It's just a hard thing, and I just... I just mm -hmm. read it every time I get upset. So. Yeah, 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 it really is. Thank you. Uh -huh. Josh. Hi, Jennifer. Hey, Josh. Hey, thank you again. Uh, appreciate mm -hmm. you and your group. Yeah. Um, a lot of work. Well, I have a couple questions. <laughs> um, I know y'all stay consistently busy all, all the time, yeah. uh, still processing um, utilities or clothing mm -hmm. vouchers or whatever else. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, any need for increasing uh, work staff or anything for advocates? I know many times I get some calls that, oh, no one's called me, but we probably mm -hmm. have. They just don't answer or don't have a voicemail. 
available, but mm -hmm. uh, just seeing if there's a need to increase how many advocates we have reaching out to them. And um, we we do have some vacancies now okay. um, that um, you know we are getting panels on you know weekly. Uh, I I would just say you know we we do we do the best we can yeah. with what we have. Um, we can never predict how um, our requests are going to go up or down. Um, just like we're about ready to um, roll out LIHEAP. LIHEAP right. letters are coming out now. We have added support staff to help with, that, with those over since last year. So, um, but I would say that we do have, we do have some right. vacancies that are probably open right now on, on the website. So. Okay. And another question, I know I get mm -hmm. this uh, call on income guidelines mm -hmm. with how the economy is kind of shaping up with inflation mm -hmm. and stuff. Is there any federal guidelines that looks like income might be going up for some of the cutoffs? Um, you know, those are, um, those are usually updated every year um, from the federal government. Most of our programs are federal, federally funded, and so they, they do adjust, and, and we just roll them into, into our programs and give them to our advocates and just make sure they're using the most current, um, the current ones. But I think you, you will see a little bit of increase um, in the income each time that that happens. I don't, I don't think they ever really decrease that much, so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any Thank other you. questions? Melvana? This may be, I see that question, but uh, if the grandparents has, uh, grandchildren or grandchildren that have been in the hospital, I know this lady has seven grandkids, and I think a couple of her a daughter and the son are deceased, and they're the children of them. Uh, I know some places, some st is there any uh, subsidy for the grandparents taking care of the the grandchildren I will are you saying if they um, if she, they were in ICW custody or no? no she's got them she's mm -hmm. got, she's the guardian of these kids mm -hmm. but she was asking if there's anything any help you know as help raise these kids you know uh, from somewhere or where and I said well I don't know but I'll ask okay um, I'll ask to make sure and, uh -huh. and um, send you that an email. I mean, like other states, if they're adopted, even when they're adopted, they mm -hmm. still get uh, income from, you know, for being, I guess, I don't, right from that state, you know. And I said, well, other states will do that. I don't know about here, you know, but I'll ask and see. Okay. She's going to adopt them, I guess, eventually. Right now, she just got a guardianship. And I said, <clears> okay. And if I, I don't know if she um, here if she would be willing for us to contact and maybe go over okay. some of the programs if uh -huh. you want to share okay. her I'll name and number after yeah. afterwards we can certainly talk about some of our programs that we have okay. that that I'll might help. It. Could I give you her your number and have a call or mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. all right yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Go ahead, Yo. I'm back on that. I see. That. I know it's it's hard, but. You know, like you got 46 vacancies. Is nobody applying for those jobs, or? Um, I think they are, um, but I, I think that um, it's a very, very hard, very mm -hmm. hard job. Um, I think that um, they do get panels, and then they they interview. Um, that's just a, you know, a big, a big area um, that. I hope one day it'll be zero. <laughs> um, but I also know, you know, as each year comes, they may open up some more e each each year, um, depending on funding, as well too. So, but um, I mean, we're we're working to recruit and and hopefully get some good qualified people. So. Well, I know when I call all those, they they're great to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as trying to help and everything, but it's just they're kind of limited, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. No other questions, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank we you. appreciate you. Thank you. Next up, we have Department of Transportation Infrastructure, Michael Lynn. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Committee. Uh, you have our uh, monthly reports. Uh, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. I do have a couple things I would just like to highlight uh, on transportation. We've got a couple of projects out to bid right now. One of them is Delonaghy South Road in uh, southern Adair County. 
Uh, we had a, a pre-bid meeting on that this morning and had a good showing of contractors on that. We will be opening bids on that on October 31st. Uh, the second project is the Mud Valley Road project is currently out to bid. We have not had a pre-bid meeting on that, uh, but we, we've got a bid uh, opening scheduled uh, November 17th for that project. Uh, we've got a few other projects we're working on getting finaled out and closed out, and uh, some bridge projects that are, are starting to wind down that uh, will be closing out soon. And then we're also working with the uh, town of Ian on a, a sanitary sewer system project in the uh, Armstrong Park area. Uh, there'll be a huge improvement for that uh, community. Uh, working with uh, Councillor Smith on that uh, through some of his ARPA funds. Uh, and with that, I did also want to mention, Mr. Chair, that uh, uh, any, any of the ARPA infrastructure funds that the council members have, uh, also including motor fuel tax and vehicle tax uh, funds uh, that, that you have, if you need any, any, any assistance with that, any help, uh, anything that we can provide to try to help uh, get some of those spent or get some of those obligated to some projects, uh, don't ever hesitate to reach out uh, to uh, either Andy Quitone or myself, either one, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll definitely work with you to try to get some of those dollars obligated. So, Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. I'll be glad any to answer any questions. Any questions for Michael? We'll move on to the public comments for roads. Or just again, just a standing agenda item, if there's any public comments gotcha. from anybody, uh, we would take that at this time. Any questions for Michael? Well, Michael, we appreciate you, right. buddy. We'll uh -huh. see you Thank next. you all. Uh, Michael. I'm sorry. Mm. Yes, sir. They had the asphalt plant going on White Mission yesterday. Good deal. Had it up and running. <laughs> and you only rarely see that. No, no, that's, that's very true. <laughs> I'm uh, glad to hear that. That's good news to hear. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, all right, next up we have Jerry Killer with housing. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. You have the housing report. I will take any questions you have. Any questions for Jerry? Cadessa. <clears throat> uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon, uh, Jerry. I, I have some questions related to the bid process for housing rehab. Okay. Um, it may be it may be better served for these to for the discussion to take place, um, perhaps maybe after the meeting. But I've had um, I, I've had a number of folks reach out to me about um, the bid process for um, for housing rehab, with some some questions about. Um, hmm. I guess I would say procedure related okay. to uh, needs that are identified. Okay. And um, the the I've, I've had several inquiries in the past uh, past few days. Okay. So I, I assume they may be stemming from some specific issues. Okay. Um, I'm struggling to be more specific. I'm sorry. Th that's okay. Uh, we can certainly talk after the meeting if you want to get into sp some specifics on okay. certain bids. Um, that's okay. Because okay. I know that um, at some point in the past you have spoken to the issue of um, scarcity of contractors. Yes. Um, is is the bid process something that? I don't want to say interferes with, but is the bid process something that um, might be an obstacle for some individuals seeking to um, step in as contractors in some cases? It could be if they don't know uh, if they don't know what's required, if they don't know how to bid, mm -hmm. um, that could be. But our contracts and our procurement staff work with contractors. You know, when they have mm -hmm. questions about. What is required? You know, what do I need to do a bid? We do offer some guidance with that. Okay. Okay. So there, there is some guidance and some Absolutely. kind of uh, helping to walk kind of through walk through Absolutely. that process, especially for some of the new contractors. Absolutely. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, well, I appreciate that, and I'll visit with you after the meeting. Okay. Okay. Along alongside that, I also had a guy that said. It doesn't pay to be a tarot vendor because it takes so long to get paid. Mm. That, that's what we hear. That takes over a month to get a check, and the, the, but they're not like a Flintco or a Manhattan that can float it. 
Is there a way that we could speed up the process? So Housing Authority, we pay uh, Friday to Friday. So if you get your invoice in by Friday, we issue checks the following Friday. Okay. I can't answer what Cherokee Nation's process is, but I Housing you. Authority, you get an invoice into us by Friday, and you have a check issued the following Friday. Okay. Uh, that's good to know because there's so many different branches of things going on here, you know, so... If you put an invoice in by Friday, you can get paid by the next Friday through mm -hmm. the housing. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Now, if you put one in on Monday, that means it's going to be the following Friday. Got you. Uh, but it's, we're Friday to Friday. Okay, okay. Any other questions? Go ahead, son. Now, um, we, I've dealt with it so many times. The three months, they'll pay the three months, you'll get a voucher for emergency rental assistance, right? Sort of. You're, you're combining a couple programs. Okay. Emergency rental assistance, what we called ERAP, that was the Department of Treasury funds that we received. That ended September 30th. Now, there that's is, the extended. There is no more ERAP. So, but what, what you're talking about was the extended rent where it was months, a lot of months. We, and we did it three months at a time. Uh, okay. uh, so now we have uh, our regular rental programs. We have the regular rental assistance program, and we also have temporary uh, rental assistance. We call That's that TAP. The one we've dealt with for about eight years. We've had TAP, tap for a very long time. Tap. Yes. Now, okay. TAP wrap. So TAP. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah starting to write we song, like our acronyms. <laughs> but uh, all right. So we are back to TAP. Yes. And. Now, that's three months, too, right? It is. It's up to three months, depending on the need of the family. Okay. And the ERAP was a three-month thing? ERAP was three months at a time. It capped out at 15 months of assistance. Oh, okay. But we that had was, to recertify the, it every three months. That was the biggie. Yes. But we still have the one emergency situation. Yes. Hey, we're going to help you for three months after that. Yes. Yeah. An emergency, uh, I would prefer to say in a hardship situation, because emergency kind of makes it sound like, um, I can put you somewhere tonight to lay your head down, and that's not how that works. You still have to find a place to rent. If you don't have a place to rent, you still have to find a place. We still have to go through an inspection. Um, so okay. it's more of a hardship type yeah, situation. I'm very familiar with, yeah. with it. I just got my... Yeah, my yeah ERAP is gone. So we can all forget about ERAP. ERAP's gone. Okay. So we're just we're just <laughs> tapping and rapping now. <laughs> don't say ERAP again. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Jerry, here, here's some of the, what I was going to ask you. Like on some of these contractors, um, have we ever developed? Now, we've got lawyers in here going to roll their eyes probably. But in my mind, you know, your neighbor that is a good carpenter, he may not be bonded, he may not have this type of, but he could fix a lot of these problems. I've always envisioned um, a document where they give the Sam family, hey, you need some help on this. Here's, we've got a, we've got someone who can fix it. Here's an affidavit though, that you're gonna sign saying, these people are here to help me. They aren't bonded, they're not whatever you needed to be. Oh, like a waiver? Yes, so we could get, and, and that would knock a whole lot of, you know, some of these things, um, I just know that it would help some of these some of these people that can actually do the work if if we're and I know we are in such such a bind where it's hard to find people to go fix things. Absolutely it is. And so what what do you so think? So we um you know we there are some requirements of our contractors. You know there are insurance requirements. Mm -hmm. Uh they do have to have um, workman's comp insurance. They do yeah. have to, you know, there are things that they have to have as a contractor. Yeah. Um, licenses, <laughs> we they have to have a license in certain things no, depending on federal, what they're doing. Federal there's guidelines. federal, there's state. Um, you know, if if a house was built before, and forgive me if I say no, this one wrong, paint 19, yes, lead based paint, um, RRP certifications, you know, those are state requirements. There's nothing I can do about those. Um, we're trying to work with the contractors to get RRP certified um, because we're lacking in that area with contractors. We get to the point where we might have only two or three that can bid on a, on a house that was built in the 70s or prior because the state requires that certification. State requires it. Um, 
but there are there are some ways potentially around I don't want to say around it but you know we can also do um, materials only so if you do have you know neighbor handyman mm -hmm. that wants to help someone out we can do materials only for the family or we're providing the materials and, and they're working with someone to provide the labor uh, we're not paying the contractor for the labor mm -hmm. but we could provide the materials and uh, then whoever provides the labor and that doesn't yeah. go through our certification right and you know talking about the carpenter shortage um, yes I can see where that would, I could see where that would be a big obstacle mm -hmm. is you know some of the smaller smaller companies not uh, meeting the requirements and things and, uh, but we we talked before we're just, we're not just accepting tarot it's anybody it's no matter. anybody yes tarot preference but not requirement so yes anybody okay anybody can bid on a job all right thank you you're welcome any other questions for jerry good you know last meeting we kind of touched on modular homes compared to trailer houses and i was going to call you and try to get some prices which i didn't do <laughs> <laughs> Did, did y'all look at that any this month? Or? We, we have a, a solicitation out right now. So as soon as we get our bids back and get those opened, and look, we can be able to have some better pricing would ideas. Would y'all rather for them to do modular homes and trailer houses? So we, we've got two bids out for solicitation right now. We've got one for uh, mobile homes and then one for any alternative housing. Um, so that could be modular. That could be the uh, homes that are maybe built in a shop and then transported on site that could be for any type of alternative housing any, anything that's not a mobile not our traditional stick built so we've got an rfp out for that so we're taking proposals from anyone who who's interested in doing that for us thank you you're welcome i'll call you this week okay go ahead sean yeah one more if we if we get into the mobile homes uh, is there going to be any uh, time frame when they they have to wait before they uh, file or try to apply for rehab? Now I'm telling you, I've <laughs> I've lived I've lived in a mobile home, and the trim starts falling off yeah. the second week, and and being on council, I have got those phone calls. Yeah, uh, yeah, and if we don't think we're going to get those phone calls. Uh, we need to do some gambling together or something. Uh, but is there going to be some kind of time frame where if they get a mobile home, uh, how long can they file for rehab? Because they're going to be calling. So a lot of the rehab policy currently says that if you have a current deed restriction agreement mm -hmm. on your property, that you're not eligible for further rehab. How about repayment agreement like we do on the new construction houses? Like if my air conditioner goes out, right. I can... Do a so, agreement. so that is the policy. We do have some. We do some modification agreements, uh, just depending on what the issue is. If it's something that is a true emergency and we need to go in and take care, of, we can modify the DRA for them, so that they can still get that assistance. Now, I I don't know that we're going to buy someone a brand new mobile and then in three years we're doing a total rehab on it because you got to look a little bit at maintenance and owner responsibility versus just general wear and tear and warranty and yes we realize that a mobile the the maintenance the the traditional wear and tear is going to be a little sooner than a stick built house uh, but i mean we we still do and expect the homeowners to take care of them too right, right. Uh, i had one i had one that was 20 years old Man, it was in bad shape after after 20 years. I mean, it's just like, a, you know, a stick-built house, too. We have new construction homes, or we have houses that are less than 10 years old that look terrible because people don't necessarily take care of them. We have mobiles right now that come onto rehab that are 20-plus years old that you would never know it that they're that old because the Thank homeowner care. takes care of it. Again, there are going to be things that happen, of course, but a lot of that goes back to taking care of it thank you any other questions 
All right, Jerry, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you. Next up, we got Barbara Foreman with the Veterans Center. Look at Barbara now. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I think you all have got the report we sent over, we should have. And uh, do you have any questions for us? I need to see you after this meeting, if that's okay. Okay. Any questions for, go ahead. Yes, Johnny. Uh, Secretary, thanks for being here today. Hey, j just a real quick question about the Warrior database. Do you, have, do you know, happen to know how many we've got signed up on that so far? I haven't checked it lately. Uh, I have to go through... Uh, Gibran Quadre, I believe his name is. Uh, he hasn't, or they haven't turned on the button where I can just go in there and okay. and check things. And so, I haven't, I haven't looked lately. So, All right, no, no problem. I'll, the, I'll just follow the, up with you with an email. The numbers I'll, I'll are not. Something. The last time I got a, a list, they weren't where I wish they would be. Copy but, that. Uh, hopefully, right. they've grown some since then. All right, thank you, Secretary. Mm -hmm. Chief. Any other questions? Go ahead. Hello there, Secretary. Good to see you. Good to see you, ma'am. Um, I like the uh, October 1 combat veterans, motorcycle riders. We're here to drop off donations. Um, I was wondering if that includes clothing for female veterans or just male? Often it will, will, will have some intermixed with the others. I didn't personally go through it this time. Uh, Barbara and some of them uh, uh, go through them and, and store them on the shelves and all. And, and I haven't got a complete inventory of that, but they brought several sacks of, of clothing, and it's it's warm clothing because of the season we're in. Uh, they've done it in years past. They're combat veterans; they like to do it. They were they stopped here, and then they're going to Claremore to drop off some more. And uh, you know, we have the coffee pot on and a donut, or you know, restrooms and bottled water, and they're just glad to be out and about. And it was a pretty day. Um, so I'm sure there's, if there wasn't any in this particular batch, we probably have some from a time past. So. Um, and I had worked with Barbara in the past, um, oh, maybe it was last year, but she said there was um, a need for personal items for female veterans that come in from time to time. Exactly. And I, if that's still a need, I would like to know that because I, I like to help with those sorts of things, and I would with the clothing as well. So. She, she mentioned that to me also, uh, Barbara did, and... There is a need for, for that because uh, more and more as time goes along, there's more and more ladies in their service serving the country. And so uh, you're right about that. And I'll bring it up to Barbara. She, okay. she would be a better hand to, to do an inventory of things that might be needed, might needed. than I will. I, okay. Yes. I'd love to help with that, and I'm sure some of our other counselors would as well. Yes, Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions? I would like to mention something. On the 29th of this month, there is a gentleman that was killed in World War II. His, uh, I got his name here. His last name is Fields, or was Fields. Virgil Cephas Fields, Jr. was a pilot that got shot down in World War II. And he's being inducted, or his memory and all service is being in inducted into the Oklahoma Military Hall of Fame on the 29th. Uh, Dwight Birdwell will also be there. He was inducted in 2017, and they're going to recognize him because of the Medal of Honor he received. And the tribe, Cherokee Nation, we've, we've got two tables over there with 10 seats at each table. And then we've got some vacancies for those seats. Um, we don't want to have more people than we got chairs or seats. But we'd like to fill the tables up. So if you if you know a friend or a veteran or someone who might have an interest, if you'd get the name to me, and between myself and Eve Cushing, uh, Lieutenant Commander, uh, uh, there in the Oklahoma Military Hall of Fame, is making a chart with names and all, and we're trying to coordinate that. So uh, we'd we'd gladly receive a few names if you know anybody. And of course, the Warrior Flight, November. Uh, the 10th and the 11th and come home on the 12th. As far as I know, that's still a goal. We praise the Lord for that.
taking 15 this time and some of the council's going so we'll hope everybody has a safe and enjoyable trip so if that's it well thank you very much thank you so much right. appreciate you okay. moving on old business done pending new business done pending any announcements the next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Monday, November 14th at 3 p.m., and I need one more motion. All in favor? All right. Motion. 